Have you ever been in that awkward, awkward situation where you're just standing on the sidewalk minding your own business when suddenly some random person comes up to you out of nowhere, looks you dead in the eye, and says, Hey, do you think you could tell me what the captain's rank insignia plaque was? And you just stand there looking like, huh, I really don't know what it was. Or is that just me? Well, if whether or not you've been in that situation, I think you can learn something from today's episode of Star Wars Nerds and Geeks. So first, what are Imperial officers? Well, they are the people in charge of the army. There's a tier list of officers going from the very highest officer, the Grand Admiral, going super low down to midshipmen and sometimes even lower. But all officers had a certain degree of power and they uh, had control over certain parts of uh, the Imperial Army. And today I'm going to be talking about the Imperial Navy officers, so mostly officers that served on Star Destroyers, but sometimes they serve on Arquitan class uh, cruisers like the one we saw in the um, Incompetent Officers episode a few weeks back and some served on even like uh, Gazanti, stuff like that, but generally on Star Destroyers. Uh, but without any further ado, let's hop straight into the first one. Let's start off with the category of the enlisted officers and the non-commissioned officers, or NCOs. And these officers are all on the lowest end of the totem pole. So first, right here, you can see uh, what a junior crewman would wear on their chest. And if I haven't explained this already, uh, what I'm talking about is the kind of plaque that they wore on the top left of their chest that you see all officers wear. So first, the junior crewman just has a, just has a gray little square on the top left. Then you get over to the crewman who's wearing this and the two lines on the sign signify um, code cylinders. So that means that they're wearing two code cylinders, I think. I'm pretty sure there is a slight chance that I'm wrong. Then we go over to an able crewman, which is probably just a tiny bit above crewman. It just has the two uh, rectangles. And as you can see, we're just slowly adding gray rectangles and uh, cylinders. Leading crewman, just a tiny bit above able crewman. Same thing, just adding a cylinder. Then here we have the chief, which again is kind of low on the totem pole, but uh, is the highest of all these people. Just like a square of squares almost. Move over to the master chief, just a tiny bit above that, they get an extra cylinder. And by the way, this is all. Um, looking at directly at the officers um, the plaque would be like directly on the officers so when you're looking at the like cylinders you'll see that the cylinders are say on the right of the side and it would be on the right when you're looking at it but it would actually be on the left side of the officers moving on we finally get some colors we got the officer cadet which is just like a uh, officer in practice then we get the midshipmen with the red and the two lines and then the ensign with the red and blue with the two cylinders and those are just again just kind of higher ranks. Moving on to the officers. These are the people that you are going to see the most. They are like the average officers. First, lowest down, we have our acting sub lieutenant and lieutenants are all um they're kind of like a, they're in charge of a small group of people. So it's, I mean, it's really hard to explain, but say you have a crew of gunners of like three gunners, the person that's in charge of those gunners would be a lieutenant. So a tiny bit above the acting sub-lieutenant is just the sub-lieutenant, which um, as you can see, actually adds a lot onto the uniform. It gets an extra line of red and blue, and then it gets two code cylinders. Moving over, we get 
the lieutenant who just has one code cylinder, and I find that really interesting because I would think that lieutenant would have more than the sub-lieutenant because the lieutenant's higher than the sub-lieutenant. Anyways, lieutenant commander, and this is just getting slowly higher, higher, and up in rank. And honestly, mostly what you'll see is just a lieutenant. You won't see acting sub-lieutenant, sub-lieutenant, lieutenant commander, just the lieutenant. The other ranks are just to distinguish between two different lieutenants to see who has the higher rank. Moving right on to commander, and I don't know if you can see from these pictures, but the um, uh, the, the colored squares actually get further, sometimes will be farther apart and sometimes will be really squashed together. That's another way that can help you see who it is. Um, then down to the captain. The captain is kind of like the person who controls the ship. Generally, the captain is the person who is in charge unless uh, us, an admiral is on the ship. But in most cases, the captain's in, in control of the ship. I almost said control and uh, in charge at the same time. Con charge. <laughs> um, then we get the line captain who has a total of four code cylinders, the most code cylinders that we've seen. Then over to the Commodore, who is kind of like the Captain, but just a tiny bit different. I think that the Commodore is a little lower rank. And let me just butt in here to say that the code cylinders are like secret um, to our codes that decrypt the mess are mostly used to like decrypt codes. So the more code cylinders you have, the more access to codes you get. So the lower ranked people won't have that many code cylinders and then the higher ranked people will have a lot of really important code cylinders. And now we get to go to the command officers. Not every ship has a command officer. A lot of them, the highest rank is just the captain. Uh, it's kind of rare in my opinion to see a command officer, but like really important ships like uh, the flagship, like the Chimera was the flagship of Thrawn, so you're going to see Thrawn on that. But most other ships are just going to have a captain. But anyways, we get to the rear admiral, and you can start seeing in the... They have a lot of um, squares. The rear admiral has um, just four of each color, four red and four blue, and then just one code cylinder. And I want to say, it's interesting that some have, like the rear admiral is higher up than a lieutenant, but they have the same amount of code cylinders. If I had to guess, I would say that the rear admiral has like a higher quality, like a, um, it decrypts more important codes than the lieutenants would. Moving down to the vice admiral, we get a whole nother row of red and blue. And the vice admiral, I suppose you could say, is like the vice president uh, admiral. Then we get down to the admiral, who actually has less code cylinders than the vice admiral, which is also very, very interesting. Um, and the admirals, actually everybody in this rank is an admiral. Admiral is like the highest rank you can get in a uh, navy in uh, the Empire, the only way you could get higher than an Admiral is by adding something in front of the Admiral. We go over to Fleet Admiral, who has three code cylinders, and the Fleet uh, Admiral is probably higher up than the Admiral, the Admiral's higher up than the Vice Admiral, and the Vice Admiral is higher up than the Rear Admiral. But again, they're all just Admirals, and the only reason you would distinguish between them is if there are multiple competing Admirals. But then the next two admirals I'm talking about, you probably will want to address them by their full name because these are very high ranks and they're very hard to get. I mean, all of these ranks are really high and hard to get. They deserve a lot of respect for getting up there. But these last two are very impressive. We have the high admiral who has, is not high. He, <laughs> sorry, he has two code cylinders and this is the first time we are seeing a spark of yellow so whenever if you're looking at somebody these are designed so that you can really easily see who it is 
So if you see a spark of yellow, you know that they're really, really high up. So the High Admiral, again, kind of just an admiral, but they uh, worked really hard to get there, and they were very impressive. Um, and they're high, but not high. They're high. High. That was awkward. Um, and then now we get the Grand Admiral. And when you're looking at this picture, you will see that, first off, there is a lot of yellow and there's just a whole splash of color. So the Grand Admiral is going to be really easy to spot out. Also, the Grand Admiral is going to have a white uniform, so just easy in general to spot out. But not only that, the Grand Admiral, as you can see from this picture, has no code cylinders. However, I know for a fact that a Grand Admiral has 12 code cylinders. Either It's either 6 on each side or 12 on each side, but they have a lot of code cylinders. So this uh, picture is actually inaccurate. So that either means that this picture doesn't show the true extent of code cylinders on the person, or that um, I was mistaken and these lines don't mean code cylinders. But the Grand Admiral is like the highest of the high. A Grand Admiral is like in par with the Emperor like it goes Emperor and then Darth Vader and then the Grand Admirals so you know the Grand Admirals are pretty high up there they're very very important and the Grand Admirals it took a lot of work to get up there there's only a small number of them it took a lot of work to get up there there's not a lot of people there so these Admirals are like the best of the best you don't want to face against a Grand Admiral even the dumbest, sloppiest, stupidest Grand Admiral is still a lot to handle. So if you are a rebel and you see this blue square and then the stripe of yellow and the stripe of red and the white uniform, you gotta run. That's officers. I'm kind of in an Imperial officer mood lately. I did the incompetent Imperial officers. I did this one and then I'm probably gonna do some more about officers. I think officers are really cool. If I was in the Empire, I would want to be a officer. I like to be able to strategize and try and think of what my enemies are planning and try and move everything in the right way, attack the right planets to gain the outcome. I wouldn't do very good as a soldier. I'm not I'm not like skillful. I'm more like um strategist. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. That is about all I've got. So until next time, this is Star Wars Nerds and Geeks signing off. See you all next time.